Okay, welcome back. Hour number two. We have talked for years and years since uh, before Y2K about the need to prepare. Uh, many of you listening have done something to prepare. You've got food put away. Some of you have stored water. Some of you have water filters. We can go without food for quite a while, but you can't make it without water. And if your local water supply dries up and you're not fortunate enough to be on a well, which is probably 99% of America, you're on some kind of a municipal water system, uh, you're out of luck. You'll, you'll line up. You'll stand in line all day to get a drink of water. You'll have to. They could control us that simply. And at the rate big business and big industry is fracking and destroying our indigenous native undersea aquifers, uh, underground aquifers on the coast. They're under the ocean, too. There, there's good water, potable water everywhere. There used to be. And if I'm not correct, about 75% now of the terrestrial underground aquifers have been contaminated or polluted. I remember the story about MTBE in California, and it takes just a thimbleful to destroy an entire underground water source. Those are for people who have wells. A lot of that water, of course, is pumped into municipal systems around the country. And then there's snow melt-off. If the snow is polluted, you've got pollution in the water. If the water runs through agrarian areas, you're going to have polluted water because of the herbicides and pesticides. Uh, it is absolutely essential that you have a supply of clean, pure water. You cannot always rely on filtration. You cannot always rely on the authorities, of course, to do much of anything. Uh, you can't run around hoping to catch some rain to drink. So unless you store enormous amounts of bottled water, uh, what are you going to do? Well, there's an old saying about making it out of thin air. Remember that one? He made it out of thin air. Well, in point of fact, there is now science that will allow you to make pure, beautiful, healthful, living water from what we can call thin air. We're going to tell you about that this hour, so don't go away. My guest is Wayne Ferrara. Uh, he is uh, a remarkable man. You may re If you don't remember the name Wayne Ferrara, you know nothing about tennis. He was a fixture on the professional tennis circuit from 1989 until... 2005. Uh, he has quite a, a string of remarkable athletic achievements. He is originally South African. He lives in California now. He is the president of Ecola Blue Water. And I'll leave it at that and just call it Ecola Blue Water. What it is, you're going to, you're going to find out. And I think many of you are going to recognize what I recognized immediately, that this is something that I want to have. But more than that, it's something that I need to have if I'm going to make any pretense of being a prepper. Without this product, I don't have a chance at all. And I know it sounds like I'm overstating it. I'm not. You're going to find out a lot more. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, Wayne Ferrara's tennis accomplishments, I've got that in the guest section at rents.com. Click on that. He has a, a very nice Wikipedia page, which talks about his career. Again, he was a, a fixture on the tour for a long time. Uh, Wayne, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. That uh, little introduction I did off the top of my head was actually how I, I feel. There's no exaggeration anywhere. Did I miss anything important? No, absolutely not. You're a perfect advocate for our technology and uh, and for what's going on. I mean, you certainly hit the nail on the head. Uh, everybody needs to prepare. I mean, things are still okay at the time being for the amount of water source that we have, but things are getting progressively worse as we go, and people need to start preparing for it. We are uh, literally rapidly approaching time when the big multinationals, as you well know, are buying up what's left of any meaningful source of drinkable water on this planet, uh, not just because we have ruined most of the rest of it, but because they are greedy and they understand supply and demand, and you can do nothing more vicious than literally hold the lives and, and deaths of hundreds and maybe billions of people in your in your own hands if you own their water supply. So how to get around that? 
ladies and gentlemen. Now, for those of you listening who have a well, I'm on a well. I'm lucky. I'm down about 200 feet, something like that, and, and the water is, is safe and secure. But I would say that 99.9% of Americans don't have that, that kind of a situation. They don't have that luxury. They're not as fortunate as I am. And to that end, I want to point you again to guests, if you would. Uh, click on Wayne Ferrara's name, and that will take you right to the website. And you'll also see a banner for it at, right near the top of rents.com in the center. Uh, Ecolo Blue. E-C-O-L-O-B-L-U-E, right? EcoloBlueBlog.com. It is, uh, it's a repository of fascinating information. And I, I want to go back to the issue of making something appear out of thin air. Most of us don't think of the air around us as anything much more than, than oxygen, uh, that we breathe, uh, oxygen that is necessary for all kinds of things on the planet, and certainly carbon dioxide as well. There are uh, there are other things in the atmosphere, and one of them is H2O. And I remember years ago reading a, a story about H2O being able to be brought out of the air, to be evaporated, so to speak, from the air and, and condensed, I guess is the more appropriate word, and made into a, a, an amount, a supply, a constant supply that, that could be consumed. And that's exactly what we're talking about with E. Colo Blue. Tell us, please, if you would, Wayne, how you got involved with this when you first heard about it, what prompted you to get to the company. And without question, E. Colo Blue, and there are some competitors out there, is the, uh, the Mercedes-Benz. They are, these, this is the best. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with this. Well, actually, I was a little bit fortunate. I came across the technology about 15 years ago through a friend who uh, who brought it to me. Um, just matter of factly, uh, was talking about this new technology that he heard of that had made water out of the air, and you know, I found it very intriguing. At that particular stage, I was still playing on the on the professional circuit; didn't really have that much time. Uh, always kept it in the back of my mind, and then I retired in 2004. Uh, you know, didn't do much for a couple of years, and was thinking about some my next uh, part of my life, and it just kept kept getting on me about uh, this technology, and and the you know coming from from South Africa and Africa in general with the difficulties that people have with water, it was always intriguing for me. Um, so I started the company with a business partner in 2007. So we've been going almost uh, over seven years now. Um, you know, and wanted to bring this uh, this technology to everybody. I mean, there's so much lack of water. The U.S. is still a little bit behind on on the rest of the world on their struggles for water, and um, you know, we we're doing quite well with providing our technology to a lot of the countries around the world that have a lot of need. But you know, the U.S. is now you know, in California. We're starting to feel a little bit with the drought right now, and, and other parts of the country where. The first sort of feelings of of this need for water is uh, is becoming imminent now, and uh, our technology, if you look at what's available, is one of the only ones out there that can actually make water. The idea of bringing water out of the air, of course, you, we can see clouds, we understand moisture. Uh, are there areas in the country, in the U.S., for example, that it would be more difficult or less difficult to do the kind of thing that your technology does? Yeah, so the only real um, sort of, I wouldn't say negative, but issue on it is, is that it's based on humidity. So the higher the humidity, the quicker it will make water. It will make water in any climate because part, some parts of the day the humidity might be extremely low where it would be difficult. Um, but generally uh, at night time it would be sufficient. So, you know, it doesn't come down to can you or can't you make water. It's the amount of water that you can make. Uh, obviously the more humid, the quicker it will make it. So. But you know, the people, people always ask, you know, about the technology and that. And the thing to say is if you don't have water, and uh, does it matter if you, if you have a less than somebody else in a more humid climate? The fact is we are making water, which is needed by every person every single day. And no matter where you are, you always have that uh, chance of making water. How, how difficult is the technology? How simple? How complex? Uh, I remember reading it about the same time you did. It must be 15 years ago. I do remember that. And how, all right, first of all, is it simple? Is it complicated? What's the deal? 
Yeah, well, the way the way that I explain it, because a lot of people don't really grasp the concept of it, the way that I explain it is is to think of it as a dehumidifier. Um, but a dehumidifier is designed to take the most amount of humidity out of the air and produce the least amount of water. Our technology is the same concept, but the opposite, in the sense that it's making the most amount of water out of the least amount of humidity. And that's been the issue from the R&D side is trying to change the, that technology uh, to be opposite, to be able to be uh, efficient and cost effective at lower humidity ranges. So if, you know, for most people who understand what a dehumidifier is, and it's a very simple uh, concept. I mean, it's basically taking, using a compressor and a condenser, it's freezing, freezing the humidity in the air. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we run it through an elaborate filtration system so that the water is of the finest quality so that it's potable. Um, for everybody to drink, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's a very simple technology. So it's a a cooling condenser, so to speak. You you freeze it, and then it 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 drips, and Are you, you collect it after it's filtered. Do you know how to navigate past the upcoming danger? That's it. That's it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it's, uh, there's nothing really much behind it. And what's great about our technology or our machines is that it's uh, it's very simple to manage and maintain. There's not a lot of parts in there that, uh, you know, that, uh, yes. that can break down. So it's, it's a simple technology and a simple machine to operate. Wonderful. I got I did get that much. It, it, it is very elemental and uh, lasts basically forever. All I have to do is change the filters like you do in your fridge at home. If you want filtered drinking water, you put a little filter cartridge in. Hold on a sec. We'll come right back with Wayne Ferreira and Ecola Blue in just a couple minutes. Okay, we're back with Wayne Ferrara, one of the most, uh, to me, honestly, fascinating and exciting technologies that is is essential. And there's more to come, so don't don't go away on this. This is uh, not something that you necessarily need to have power. Some people say, well, that's real nice, but what if the power goes out? Well, sit tight, and we'll explain that to you in a few minutes. Okay, if you do click on the banner... At the top of the homepage at rents.com, it'll, it'll take you right to ecolablue-world.com. And that's their, uh, their store. And you can see the various models right there. Uh, take a look. Uh, study it a little bit. How much design work went into these rather simple devices? Did you, uh, have a lot of trouble in the beginning or did it kind of just come together like it was supposed to happen? Sometimes that, that does work that way. Yeah, we, we had we had a, initially we had a machine when we first started off, which was a generic mold. Uh, which unfortunately, you could see in a lot of filtration systems. We tried to bring out a machine that looked really uh, like you, you know, a, a, of a high quality, uh, you know, like your Ferrari, Mercedes, Porsche kind of. And we we designed our machine uh, in a way that uh, ha- has a sort of a, an unusual shape that makes it look really uh, just, I, I think, really classy and, and, and of high highest quality. I mean, we're trying to produce a machine that can produce a lot of water but looks good, and people really get their money's worth out of it, uh, and, and they're happy to have it in their house, uh, in their kitchen, and wherever they put it, uh, you know, and it, it fits into all of their fixtures and looks good. Yeah, what's really nice about it, it's got casters on it, too. You can roll it around. I uh, I like that idea. You want to move it, you can move it. Yeah, I mean, the objective is to try try and have it mobile. We do that with our industrial machines as well. Sure. Okay, now you have come up with a whole range from home to industrial. Uh, Let's let's take it at the home and work our way up through the models. I just want people who are not online and who can't see to understand what kind of options there are. The, The baseline model is $12.99, $1,299. Now, for some of you say, well, wait a minute, that's a lot of money. Well, when you're out of water and you're dying of thirst, it's not a lot of money. And you go to a doctor a few times with any kind of an illness, and you've paid many times that over. Uh, it can get real expensive real fast with the so-called health care in this country. And I say stay healthy, don't get sick, and don't have to put yourselves in the hands of those who may not care about you as much as you'd like to think they do. So what we have here is a 1299 standard Base model, the Ecolo Blue 30. 
And uh, you can see it. Again, just look at the banner at the top of my homepage. Click on that, and you'll see it there. That unit can produce what? Now, first of all, before I get to that, though, I should ask you, does it have to be located in any particular part of the house? Uh, is 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 there some area that's better than others? Where, where do you want to put it? Does it really matter? Well, it matters to have a little bit more of an open room where there's some more airflow because if you do put it in, say, a very small confined area as a dehumidifier, it will take out some of the humidity out of the room. Mm-hmm. And then the less humidity you have, the, the slower it will make the water. So it's important to have it in an open space where there's some airflow going through that has a lot of air circulation. They can recirculate the air to keep the humidity at a, at a higher level. Um, you know, the machine is designed for indoor use. It can be used outside. The only thing is there's a very elaborate so, um, system in there for leaking. So if obviously if the, if the machine is leaking, it switches off so that it doesn't ruin your carpet or your floor. So, you know, if, if you have it outside and it rains, the machine will obviously switch off. So it is designed for both. But indoor use is, is probably the better place to have it. But you could put it on your porch under a porch cover, so it couldn't get wet, and it would it probably would be very happy on your porch. And you're talking about back porches here. You wouldn't want to buy your front door, but you could put it outside as long as it's protected. Correct. That actually would be the best place because sometimes when you do have the machine inside your house during during summer with air conditioning or winter during, with heaters. Yeah. It's a forced air. It's forced air and the forced air does take out some of the humidity out of the room. So you generally have more humidity outside than you will have inside your house. Got it. That was my, my thought. I'm I'm glad that that's the case. The idea of dehumidifying the air. Now a lot of people do this for medical reasons. So in a way, this is a dehumidifier. And if you're in a house and you want to dehumidify it, this this could do both, correct? It can. It's, it's obviously not as good as a dehumidifier. It's not designed specifically for that, but it yeah. will take out some of the humidity in the air, so it can be used as that uh, that purpose as well. What's the capture percentage on it, the amount of air that would be pulled into it that uh, is actually processed and yields its moisture content? And on the other side of that coin, what comes out of the machine? Is it 100% devoid of moisture, 95%, 90%? Well, the, air, the airflow is coming through quite quickly. I'm not sure what the rate is. Uh, and depending on the humidity ranges, on very humid climates, I'm, I'm, there is humidity that will come out the other side. I don't think it can capture all of it, mm-hmm. um, but it will capture as much as it, as it can, uh, you know, uh, it, with, the, with the humidity that there. It's a difficult one because it does depend a lot on the humidity range. People always ask about that, and it's hard to answer the cost of everything and how much it's doing because it depends really, really on the humidity. Right. If I lived in Death Valley, I probably wouldn't get as much as somebody who lived in the Northwest, obviously. Uh, Correct. It's, uh, it is dependent upon the environment. Now, I'm still looking at this, trying to think of questions my listeners would ask. What are some of the questions that uh, that you get asked, Wayne, that, uh, that I'm not there yet on? Uh, people always ask about the air quality, uh, what happens to the water depending on where you have the machine. And the testings that we've done, we have a very elaborate filtration system. We have an electrostatic air filter that takes a lot of the uh, air particles out. It runs through uh, carbon filters, reverse osmosis, and then it has UV lights for the bacteria. So it's very much of an overkill to a certain degree. But the, the, the machine is also designed as a hybrid that you can attach it to municipal water to filter that as well. So people oh, always oh, ask really? what happened. Oh, see, I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hybrid, so you can attach it to municipal. You can actually run it off. We've done testings with pool water. We've done testing with river water. And the, 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 the what ends up happening is the content ends up being, it can't really call the still because it's not boiled, but it, it has a neutral value. So it's uh, it's very, very pure. Uh, and then we do have a mineral filter in the machine that replaces the, the water with minerals. So the, the quality of the water is, is also the part that's exceptional about the machine, not just the fact that it makes water. But the quality of the water is also very, very good. You've just said some things that are amazing. First of all, it's got a normal carbon, fil- carb- carbon filtration. That's okay. All right, that's that's standard. But you've got a, an RO in there, reverse osmosis, which takes out all the minerals basically from the water. And then you have a system of reintroducing minerals back into the water, which is essential for people who need minerals, and that's all of us. But then you mentioned you've got 
a UV component which will kill all organic matter in the water. Mold, yeast, bacteria, fungus, virus, doesn't matter. It'll kill it. That's, that's uh, a stroke of genius. Yeah, we, we actually do have, we have three UV lights in there in different parts of the machine. Um, and the other thing that we do, which is very, very different from everybody else, is that most people who have RO systems are fully aware of the fact of the loss that they, they, they lose on ROs. Anywhere from 40 to 50 percent of the water that goes through it is, is thrown away as waste. We don't waste any water in our machine. We actually recycle the, the waste out of the RO back into the bottom tank, back in through the filtration system. So we don't, we don't waste any of the water that is generated. Fantastic. Wow. All right, we're just talking about the standard model, Ecola Blue number 30. We'll come right back and take you upscale. We're going to walk up the uh, rung here, and I think you'll be amazed at where we're going. Stand by. Okay, back with Wayne Ferrara, the president of Ecolo Blue. This is uh, really exciting stuff because this is the ultimate way. We're going to get there. Just don't go away. You don't need electricity to do this. Ponder that for a minute. Okay, the the home unit, the standard unit, Ecolo Blue 30. How many filters? There, are, you've got a picture of uh, five of them in a row. Um, tell us how the five filters work. How long will they will they last? And anything else we need to know about filtration? Okay, so basically how the machine works, the air will go through a, a, a air filter fabric, uh, which is uh, you know so it's a fabric that you can wash and clean out uh, whenever you, whenever you feel like it. The oh. water will then go into a, the water will go into a bottom tank that has a carbon filter, which would be needed to be changed every six months. It has a UV light inside there, which is uh, all UV light, and RO have a two-year lifespan on them. Mm-hmm. The water then runs through runs through the five filtration, the five uh, filters that you see, uh, starting with two post carbon, um, which need to be changed every six months. Then runs through the RO, which has a two-year lifespan. Then goes through a mineral filter which has also, I mean, these are recommended six-month changes. Obviously, if you use it every single day and you're drinking a lot out of the machine, we recommend every six months. If you don't use it as much, you can make it last a bit longer. Uh, you go through the, it goes through the mineral filter, and then the last, last filter is a post-carbon. Uh, the water will then run to the top tank. Inside the top tank, you have a UV light. And, uh, and then once you push the, <clears throat> the cold button to dispense the water, the water will run through another UV light, and, and all the, all three of the wow. UV lights have a two-year lifespan. Wow, amazing! So these are just little uh, cylindrical ultraviolet lights, like you see in, Correct, in uh, yes. other units. Okay, easy to replace. Very simple access for these things. Very simple. The new design of our quick change filters will allow you to change. If you do it, probably those five filters in front, you could probably do them in about twenty to twenty-five seconds. Not long, huh? Uh-huh. You just okay. you just uh, tw- you just twist and pull them off. Great. All right. Now let's uh, let's go up to the next one, which is the 30 me maximum efficiency. Oh, before I get ahead of myself, what's the standard daily output of the standard unit? How much water can you get? So that that's the that's the the, uh, the question that is very difficult to answer because it really depends on your on your humidity. Now, if you if you base it on a um, a 80 80, de- 80 degree Fahrenheit and and 80 degree or 70 percent humidity, it will make eight gallons a day. If you drop down to about a 50 percent humidity range, you're going to make about five gallons a day. If you get down to the to the real bottom, which is about 35 percent humidity, you can make roughly one or two gallons a day. So it really depends on your humidity that you have in your area. Well, if you can come up with five gallons of uh, magnificently pure water a day, uh, you've got it made. You don't you don't need the municipal water supply. And if the power goes out, we're going to tell people how to do this without power. Uh, you can literally survive on this machine. I mean, it's amazing that someone has come up with something so intelligent and so forward in its thinking that uh, 
Well, hang, hang on, folks. We've got a surprise for you here. All right, 30 ME, maximum efficiency. Yeah, so, that's, so we have the two, the two machines are designed, uh, in, and it depends. The maximum efficiency is the machine is based on a DC compressor. And what it is is we've designed a, inside the machine that it can be attached to solar panelings to be able to use as an off-grid system. Uh, with the DC, you're able to control the frequency of the compressor um, where we can, we can put it at a 300-watt level and you can add one 300-watt solar panel to the actual machine and run the machine um, as an independent, uh, in, independent source. You don't need electricity, and it can produce the water. That's what I was getting at. So how big is a 300-watt solar panel? I don't know much about solar. Uh, I'm not sure exactly size-wise. It's normally about the size of a table. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's large, it's large, but not overly large. I mean, and, and, but it only takes one panel, so it doesn't uh-huh. need a lot. Okay. And if you don't have a whole solar array on your roof, you can just stick this one panel up there. So if you don't have electricity, you switch over to the panel. And that's, uh, that's DC current? Correct. Yes. It's, so that's, we, we're able to, uh, you know, program it to work at 300 watts no matter what the situation is mm-hmm. so that it can mm-hmm. run on this one panel. You have to throw you have to throw a switch when you go to solar panel, though, right? From AC. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's very easy to change it inside the machine. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean the machine is designed for the solar. Are you selling uh, solar panels as well, or do you just recommend? Um, we 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 generally recommend. It's not really our forte. Uh, we do deal with some companies who do have panels and provide them for us, um, but we generally give the people the option to. To find it on their own, there are a lot of sources for solar paneling. Mm-hmm. But if they if they don't, and they would like us to help them, we we definitely help customers with solar packages. Very good. Okay, so ME is maximum efficiency. Uh, puts out more water per day than the uh, the standard thirty unit. No, it it just runs at a much less uh, electricity. Um, the 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 first unit, the, the EB thirty, is running at about five hundred watts. Uh-huh. Uh The EB the EB thirty ME uh, depending on the humidity ranges, it can vary, but it runs at about 300 watts is its, is its average uh, rate. So it's, it's much better on electricity than the the uh, lower model. Got it. Okay. And the normal refrigerator runs on what? Do we know? Uh, I'm not sure. Refrigerator. Well, to give you an example, the the five gallon jug machines that people have in their offices, those are running at uh, 550 watts mm. to to cool the water. So uh-huh. it's it's less than it's less than what you would get out of a five gallon jug uh, system. Got it. Well, a, a fridge has to be two or three times that at least, I would think. It it has to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ecola Blue 30S. That's 16.99. Sorry. And uh, yeah. What's that do? Yeah. So that one is a is a design we have that produces sparkling water. Um, so we have a CO2 canister in the machine. Uh, that you're able to produce sparkling water to produce soda and and uh, and things like that. So it's uh, it's an added value to the simple machine that's making hot and cold water as well. It can uh-huh. have the soda. All right. Okay. For those who love sodas, there you go. The Ecolo Blue 30S model. And again, you can see all these. Simply take the banner at the top of the home page and take a look for yourselves. I will be getting one of these as soon as possible. I do not trust anything, and this gives me the kind of freedom to survive with water that I can get nowhere else. And we'll be back to talk about uh, the filters and some other things as well. Stay tuned. Wayne and I will be right back. Okay, Wayne Ferrara talking about uh, making water, beautiful, pure drinking water out of thin air, which is exactly what this does. Now, again, if you want to hook up your, your kitchen sink or your water supply to it, you can do that. It'll, it's essentially one of the ultimate water filters you can get for your home if you want to use it that way. So you have multiple applications here. All right, we go up the line, and you talked about industrial models. Uh, tell us more about that. 
Yeah, so we put out a range of different industrial sized machines running from uh, 50, 50 gallons of water a day up to 1,600 gallons of water a day. 1,600? Ah, excuse me, sure. Wayne, how, how big yeah. would that unit be? The, the, the machine is large. It's, uh, it fits into a 40 foot container, but <clears throat> it is extremely large. Okay, but in a rural area, you could put solar, a uh, third world nation, uh, Africa, where they have no drinking water. You could erect one of these and put it together, and then 1,600 gallons of water a day would take care of a lot of folks. Yeah, the larger units are still using a lot of a lot of energy at the moment, and we're working a lot on reducing that. I mean, for us, the biggest goal that we have right now is to make this machine independent, that it can run self-sufficiently on, on solar and wind. The, the smaller units can very, very easily. The larger ones are... Uh-huh. Can and but you know the the amount of solar and the amount of wind uh, energy that you would need is very very large. So at this stage, uh, it can, but it's it's still bulky and, and expensive, and and that's our R and D right now is we extensively working on the energy reduction. Got it. Okay. All right. Now the filters. I'm seeing uh, three different sets of uh, five filters on the page, and then there's the uh, the unit for soda to make soda water, sparkling water. So tell us about the, the three different kinds of filters. The, well, the, fil- the filters in the front of the machine, the carbon ones, are pretty much just sediment carbon. You know, they take out a lot of the initial contaminants that come through uh, yeah. into the water. But the, mm-hmm. the, the, main, the main one, which is there, which is the one that does the, most of the work, is the RO. The reverse osmosis uh, is a very, very good uh, system. It's used a lot in undercounter filtration systems and all various filtration systems, and it takes mostly almost everything out of it. That's how the water can end up being of the distilled content. So, you know, with with the, the different ones working together and then putting the minerals back in, we have the post carbon afterwards so that there's not too much minerals that go into the top tank, that it's the right amount that goes in. So they all sort of blend together and work together to be able to produce uh, you know, the best quality water that you need. Very nice. Okay. How is this doing? Uh, let's just take the military. Does the military use these units? Yeah, we've been in talks now for a while with the National Guard. Uh, we're looking into trying to find a system for them that they, that they want to use. Uh-huh. Um, you know, there's obviously a, a lot of uh, hoops to go through when you work with government. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, we're in the process of working with, with them and trying to get in because it is definitely something that they really, really need. All right. And the prepper market. Now, this I, I'm just guessing, but I really can't imagine somebody being truly prepared without having one of these and a solar panel to go with it. Yeah, I mean, for us too. I mean, you know, there's, it's starting to become more and more evident that people need to take more care about, uh, you know, preparing themselves for emergency preparedness. Uh, you know, food is, food is one thing and water is the main thing. You need to prepare yourself for this. You bet. Uh, you got to start mm-hmm. looking for alternative ways. A lot of people are starting to get into their own, uh, gardens and, and producing their own, their own food. But yeah, I mean, these are these are the things. It's it's unfortunate that we have to start looking at those kinds of things, but it's getting more and more difficult these days with finding water, good quality water to drink. There's a lot of a lot of uh, earth, you know uh, disasters that are happening, so it is important for people to really pay attention to that. Yeah, you know, I uh, I have a, a greenhouse, and actually, you mentioned garden uh, for food gardens. You could almost put one of these in in your greenhouse, couldn't you? There's some humidity Absolutely. in the greenhouse, and it seems like maybe be a perfect fit. Do actually work a lot with uh, people in the agriculture and greenhouses, especially because they're trying really hard to get the humidity out of the greenhouse, and the machine is helping them do that, plus making the water for them. Yeah, you get uh, a greenhouse with a lot of moisture. You get mold on the plants, and and a lot of things you don't want. So it would pull the humidity out of a greenhouse, give you what's this say five gallons of, of wonderful water a day and you could you could irrigate quite a few beds uh of crops if you did it carefully. Right, or you can go to the smaller industrial units and produce uh, fifty to seventy gallons of water a day and you know how, mu- how much on how much does one of those cost? Uh, say fifty it's, gallons. It's, it's 50, uh, that's twelve thousand dollars for the fifty gallon a day one. Okay. All right. Well for some people they can afford that and that would be the ideal thing for a greenhouse uh, to be able to water your 
vegetables, uh, and even small fruit trees in a large greenhouse. That, that that's this is all fascinating to me because I, I I haven't really run across this Wayne since I first heard when I guess about the same time you did about this technology making something from the air, just taking the water out. It's atmospheric condensation. Yeah, it's actually a very such a simple technology, and yet the hardest part that we've had in the seven years of our business is uh, is the awareness to people of this technology. People are very aware of dehumidification, but none of them are are really aware of of producing uh, water out of the air and drinking it like this. Uh, uh, and it and it is a simple technology. I would think that this would just uh, be an explosively hot topic. Uh, I, I'm going to tell everyone I know, and hopefully they'll. Look at the banner and click on that and find out for yourselves. Do you, do you have any kind of, this is this business talk, but do you have a warranty on this? Is there a guarantee for it against uh, workmanship yeah, we, and so forth? Yeah, we have a one-year uh, warranty on the machine, four parts uh, on everything. So if anything does happen in that year, we do replace it. Just send it on out. Yeah, we, we take care of it. We, do. we have a great technical support to try and help as much over the phone. If not, we, we replace the parts. Uh, so, you know, we, we tr- we're just trying to take care of our customers. We're right. trying to get this technology out, so we need to look after them. Yeah, I hate to bring this up, but a lot of you know where I'm going with this, but I won't go all the way. But uh, the quality of rain uh, is not what it used to be because of the amount of uh, toxicity in the air of all kinds. There are, there's still uh, radionuclides in the atmosphere from the 1950s above ground nuclear testing the atomic bombs and the thermonuclear weapons that were tested dust dirt uh here on the west coast we get smog literally blown over here from from china uh the dust storms in the uh mongolian desert would actually blow all the way across the ocean and there are other things blowing across as well which you want to filter out your your five stage filtration system i don't think could be any better is there anything you could Imagine to make it better. This is this is superb. Yeah, no, the quality of our water is exceptional. If anybody wants to, uh, you know, uh, know we have done elaborate tests in all different countries. Uh, we've done a one local here in in the, in the Bay Area, uh, just so that we can show people the evidence that the the water quality is is exceptional. And that's you know that's the important part is that we are providing a technology of producing, but we want to make sure that they get the best quality water out of it as well. What do you recommend as a backup for people, just common sense, who are preparing? Uh, what does a series of five filters cost for a replacement? The replacement cost over, I mean, the machine, uh, you know, we, we when people ask how long a lifespan does it have, um, yeah. you know, like most appliances, you give it about a 10-year lifespan. Uh, if you amateurize the, the filter cost, it's about $100, $110 a year for filter cost. Uh, over the, over the each year for over the ten years. That's all. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The first because you know the first year and a half you only need to replace the carbon filter, and then when you get to the ROs and and UVs, uh, which is two years, they're obviously a little bit more expensive, but it's only every two years. Sure. Well, I have uh, one of the cylinder single filters. Mostly, it's just a carbon filter, I guess, that goes into my refrigerator. And I have water to the fridge, and it, it comes through that. There's there's just no comparison with that and what what you're selling. And I think that refrigerator filter unit that I buy is, I think it's thirty or thirty five dollars. They're, they're not cheap. Yeah, and no, most of the filters are not. You know, but that's where people have to be careful because they need to change it. Um, a lot of times, people buy have a, a refrigerator with these filters in it, but nobody ever changes it, so the water quality becomes very very poor. Yeah. So it's important for for people to take care of what they have and and replace the filters so that they get the, the you know the the water that they're looking for. Yeah, I have to change mine probably three four times a year, so it's you know 130 40 bucks something yeah. like that, and it would be yeah. actually less expensive to maintain an Ecolo Blue unit with your five filtration system than it would my refrigerator with a single filter. That's very very interesting. Okay, we're almost out of time, Wayne. Is there anything you want to add that we haven't touched on? I've tried to cover everything I can think of. No, well, I think it's you know it's important for people to go and have a look at the website and and look at this new technology that's out there for them. It just give them a, an option. You know, people are always uh, wondering what is the option for running out of water, and this is definitely the one that they have. 
Uh, it's a fairly simple machine. Um, it produces great water, but it gives them that responsibility to say, you know, that they have water when they need it. So in the case of emergencies or or just, just having good quality water, this technology is something that people should look into and, and really pay attention to because it, it can be very valuable to them. Well, at the rate the uh, public utilities are taking control of water, electricity, and everything else, uh, the prices of everything uh, are certainly going up and going to become more and more ridiculous. Uh, thank you. I've got one last question. Do you miss uh, being on the tour ever, Tom Stewart? <laughs> No, I, I I did it for 16 years. And, oh, that's and I was, long. Uh, a long time. I was much longer than most people, and and I had a great career, and I and I enjoyed as much as I, as I as I could. But when I retired, I I have had no regrets, and that's always the best thing about it is to have no regrets. You probably still have a lot of frequent flyer miles stacked up somewhere. <laughs> I do, I do, but I didn't I didn't take care of them as much. But uh, yeah, I, I was very fortunate to be able to do that. And, now I've moved on to something else that I'm really enjoying, so I've been oh, I'm very happy. Well, it's really nice to meet you, Wayne, and thank you for the information, you, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Absolutely, and thanks very much for having me on. Okay, most welcome. Thank Good night. You. Thanks. Wayne Ferrara, and uh, it's a great, great innovation. I really like this a lot. Okay, I hope you'll take a look at it, and... Uh, They'll be more than happy to answer your questions, I'm sure. Just get in touch with them. Okay, that's hour number two, and we'll be right back with more.